Welcome to Eat at Home, the newscast of the global food transformation. Cities are where change begins. Today, half of the world's population live in cities, and what those billions of people put on their plates matters. Food already accounts for 13% of cities' greenhouse gas emissions. In the context of where we're, we're at at the moment with COVID, what that means is making sure First of all, that we protect citizens, overcome this health crisis, but then as we recover from it, we take the opportunity to do it in a really green way. If we do that big, decisive green stimulus now, we can stay under that terrible 1.5 degree target that we have to achieve. A year ago, Los Angeles joined 13 other cities in signing C40's Good Food City Declaration, committing ourselves to sustainable food system policies that address our global climate emergency. We have increased local action to achieve a planetary health diet for all citizens by 2030. Con la restauración, con los mercados, trabajamos con las escuelas, con los hospitales. Queremos trabajar también con todos los productores de proximidad de nuestro territorio cercano, porque hay que garantizar el derecho a una alimentación saludable a toda la ciudadanía y porque el planeta ya no puede más y necesita que cambiemos radicalmente un sistema industrial global. So far, we've taken a look at urban food systems from a climate angle. But what about adding a health perspective? This year, we've witnessed how cities around the world have been at the front lines of the battle against COVID-19. This is the wet market in Wuhan where COVID-19 was first identified earlier in the year. You can even see the sign now for the seafood market. During lockdown, the city of Wuhan was almost empty on the streets at public spaces. Clearly, the pandemic has been felt hard in cities around the world, not only in Wuhan. Yet it's also presented opportunities to build back better. Our greetings from Quezon City, Philippines, comes with sincere wishes for everyone's safety. With vegetables in short supply, we thought of empowering our residents to plant their own sources of good nutrition. The beauty of urban agriculture is that it not only addresses hunger issues, but it has brought communities closer together. Cities are places where we see innovation and growth, but there's also a flip side to this economic growth, and that is obesity and, and diabetes. It's the way that we live, eat, uh, transport ourselves uh, that influences uh, our risk of, of diabetes. We believe that the solutions to prevention lies in cities. Solutions become local, where uh, coalitions of local stakeholders, public sector, private sector, and civil society organizations come around to actually finding what the best solution is in this particular city. Have you ever thought about how the design of your city influences what you eat? What's important to them when they're making a decision about the food that they eat? That's the big question. We're doing this by establishing science-based targets for local food systems focused on the climate impact, reshaping neighborhood food environments, looking at grocery stores, physical surroundings, street vendors. And though the content is Copenhagen specific, we're working to make sure the approaches and methods can be easily applied in other cities around the world. If we bring citizens, decision makers, city officials, and industry leaders together, we really believe that together, through sharing knowledge and acting urgently, that we can create cities that are not only healthy for the people living in them, but equitable places to live.